Hey, welcome back to another video and today we are going to take you through 10 exercises that you don't need any equipment for that are going to help you improve your speed for the field. So if you play football, rugby, American football, tennis, any sport that requires you to run fast, cover ground, then these exercises, if you have no equipment whatsoever, are perfect for you. So let's get going. So the first exercise is a pogo and it's really simple. It's just going to help teach you put, to put force into the ground, get nice and bouncy across the ankles. And it goes like this. So as we're doing these, we just want to make sure that we've got a nice flat foot landing. So it's nice and flat, not a pointy toe and ensuring that we're light, soft and really springy. It's just going to help give you that push. The next exercise we're going to do is ankling. Remember, never miss your ankling, okay? It's an extension of a pogo, but it's one foot after the other and sets us up to start moving into our gait. So all we're going to do is just bounce our feet up and off the ground, pulling our toes up as we do it and getting a good bit of push through the floor. The next exercise again is a bread and butter. It's the A skip. This is going to help you rehearse your upright running mechanics and teach the body to move the way that you want. It's super simple. It's all about rhythm, timing and coordination. But don't worry if you don't get it right first. Most people don't, but you just have to stick with it. Here we go. What I'm trying to do is be really light and really bouncy. I'm not trying too hard. I'm letting my cheeks wobble as I do it and I'm just covering ground really easily. So we've done the A skip, now it's time to do the B skip. Following on from what you've done, there's just a simple tweak. As that thigh comes nice and high, you just want to let the shin get out away from you and pull it back through under the floor. What this is doing is preparing and conditioning our hamstrings and our glutes posterior chain for upright running. So let's take the A skip. For example, now to turn the B, you just have to let the thigh whip the shin down. Next exercise is the egg cracker, and this is every speed freak's favorite. It's definitely my favorite. What we're trying to do here is combine a high knee run and a heel flick at the same time. And all I need you to do when you do this is imagine you've got an egg behind your knee and you're just trying to crack it. This is really teaching as for our top speed and our acceleration to really fire our hips and uh, hip flexors and hamstrings at the same time. It is such an important skill in sprinting. So I'll just do it slow and I'm using my hamstrings. And then when you get confident, you can start doing it really fast. And just after a few reps, I can really feel my hamstrings working and my hips, feels great. Next exercise, we've moved from basic skills. Now we're gonna to start to look at in applying force. And we're gonna do a bouncy run. Now you may look at this and go, what is he talking about? But there's some real clever science involved. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about doing our kind of A skip movement, but we're gonna let our knee and our hip just drop slightly. Because what this is doing is loading us. Think of it as strength training for running. So here we go, here's a bouncy run. And I'm slightly just absorbing into the ground, which is I'm taking all my weight on one leg and getting that spring effect in bigger ranges than we would have when we are sprinting, but getting all the strength and power benefits. So it's a really good one to use. We've looked at a lot of the upright running mechanics stuff and everything that helps work with our technique and the skill of just sprinting and preparing our body to sprint. Now we're going to turn the screw. We're going to build it up a little bit and focus on acceleration specifically. So the first thing that you can do here is a two point start. Just get really good at loading through the body because here, the more two point starts you can do, the more speed and power you're going to learn to create. Because what I'm trying to do here is take this position, get my weight just slightly in front of my hip so I can feel it through the ball of my foot. Okay, and there's still a little bit of weight on my back foot. Think 60, 70% of my weight on my front foot, 30 on my back, but I have to push off both, both and I'm just gonna get into a comfortable range. Now, the better you get, the lower you can go. And our next exercise is gonna show you one of the end range ones just for an example, but here, 
All I would like you to do, drop your hips, lean forward, okay? Slightly shift your weight forward and you can feel that tipping, you can even see it. And then all I would like you to do is just push out. So from there, once you've pushed out, you've got that drastic increase of speed and power. And the goal and the objective is to then learn to put one foot, one foot, one foot in front of the other to build serious acceleration. Hang on a minute, I'm down here. Right, the, the next exercise is a kneeling acceleration. We talked about two-point standing. Now we're gonna look at this two-point kneeling. What we see a lot of times is this foot is flat on the floor. I can't go anywhere with that. So what I need to do is bring this foot right back so my shin is pointing me the way that I wanna go. And just make sure there's enough space between your knee and the ball of your foot. Because if you're stacked here, there's only one way I can go, it's forward. And the challenge here is to go forward as far, but as fast as possible, bringing this back leg through. So there's a couple of ways that you can feel the weight. If you get yourself here and you tip yourself over, that's where you know that you need to be to start to push. So I'm gonna give you a demo rep and uh, hopefully the cameraman's fast enough to keep up with me. <clears throat> forward, fast, powerful, explosive acceleration. The kneeling start is a really good exercise. Okay, exercise number eight, I think. We are gonna be doing the lunge jump. So we've done our technical speed drills, we've done our explosive speed drills, and now we're gonna be training just power, pure explosive power. Again, body weight. Why would you think that you can't increase your power without lifting weight when the goal of sprinting doesn't have weight attached to it? So don't make that mistake. If you get these exercises nailed, then all you need to do is do them higher and do them further and do them faster. Really simple rules, you can't go wrong. So the lunge jump, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take ourselves into this position. There's a couple of progressions on here, okay? So I'm gonna stand nice and tall, all right? And I'm gonna drop in and up and down, okay? And that's in our lunge position. Then, once you get a bit more comfortable, we can alternate with those. So here, I'm just lunging through. Okay, that's your lunge jump. Now, here's a bonus exercise, an exercise that not many people know and it's fast forgotten. And it's called a Russian jump, a Russian lunge jump. Now the Soviets, they were the inventors of all this stuff. And this is a pretty cool exercise, but a little bit advanced. So if you, if you try it, be warned. All right, the goal of the Russian lunge is we wanna jump in, get as high as we can, swap our legs and change over. So if you feel up for it, give it a go. So here's our last exercise. And if you've made it this far, thank you. It means you're actually serious about running fast and improving your speed. So make sure you grab a free copy of my 30 day speed program below because that's actually gonna help and all this stuff's in it. So you might as well, you've got nothing to lose. The last exercise we're gonna do is our broad jump. Again, acceleration and speed, it's all about moving our body through space as fast as we can. Then a broad jump is a staple. And as I said before, if you can just do a few more of these, if you can do them further, and if you can do them faster, then you're going to be improving and you don't need any weights to do it. So a staple broad jump, it all depends on one simple thing, your shins, okay? If I do a broad jump and I'm trying to go forward, but my shins don't go forward and they don't drop, so trying to decrease the angle between my shin and the ground, I'm not gonna go anywhere. So the whole game of good broad jumping is playing chicken because you wanna drop down. And as you drop down, I'm pushing my hips forward to create that angle. So hopefully you can see that. And then all you wanna try and do is jump forward at about 80%. In speed, 80% is 100% because it's all about skill. So I'll give you a demo. I'm just gonna sink, shins drop, jump forward and land. So that's your 10. Get them into your program, get them in two to three times a week, play with the reps, 10, 15 meters for the drills, 20 meters or so for the jumps. But as I said, if you want a free copy of my 30 day speed program, just hit the links below.